uh, and host of The Dirt Show. Alan Dershowitz joins us now. We would love to understand, uh, Alan, uh, what what exactly is is uh, Donald Trump being charged with in this latest indictment? The, the basic charge is that he personally knew he had lost the election. He believed that he had actually lost the election fair and square, and he engaged in all these actions with a corrupt uh, motive. I don't think the government's going to be able to prove that. Uh, there is no— First of all, uh, it, first of all uh, let me tell you something. I talked to Donald Trump uh, probably about two weeks before January 6th. Uh, there is no way he believed he lost that election. There's still, today, he does not believe he lost that election. I can guarantee I right. it. You know I him well enough to know right. that. He he believes he won the election, and he believes it was stolen from him. I think he's wrong. Uh, many people told him he was wrong. Many people are quoted in the indictment telling him he was wrong, but that doesn't make the crime. The crime requires Correct. proof beyond a reasonable doubt that he himself actually knew and believed it and acted with a corrupt motive. You know what, guys, man, whether or not Trump actually won or not, I truly don't know. I don't. Uh, but the thing is, we have to understand that, number one, there is corruption in politics. There is. And, uh, you know, we have to also understand that leading up to the 2020 election, the, the stories about Joe and Hunter Biden were suppressed. So, again, we do understand that. Um, and the thing is, man, Trump, I believe that Trump truly believed that he won that election. And, again, I, th I think he truly still believes he won that election. So, again, and, and Glenn Beck said he spoke to him, and he truly believes he won that election. Uh, so, again, I don't know whether he won or not. And, and again, man, I'm not going to speculate on that because I truly don't know. Um, but, again, I don't think there's a crime here. I think they're going to have a hard time proving a crime. I don't think the government's going to be able to prove that. But to, to state a broader point, when the Attorney General of the United States authorizes an indictment, as was done here, against the man running against the incumbent president, who is now tied 44-44 in the New York Times poll, that indictment better be the strongest indictment in American history. There should be a smoking gun, fingerprints, a videotape, and a confession. This document is so flawed, is so filled with speculation. Jack Smith's famous for bringing speculative cases and then being smacked down by appellate courts. Uh, this just doesn't satisfy the Banana Republic test. In Banana Republics, presidents prosecute their political opponents. And the stronger their political opponents are in the polls, the more likely they are to be prosecuted. And we don't want that to happen in the United States. And I think this indictment doesn't meet what I call the Nixon standard. The Nixon standard is Nixon's crimes were so obvious that even his political supporters uh, favored mm -hmm. his being impeached or being prosecuted. That's not the case here. Right now, the only people who seem to support this indictment are partisans who are anti-Trump, and that's just not enough to heal the divisions in this country. So, this You know what, man? Number one, we have to understand they're going after this man over and over again, and they have been since he was in office. You know, the fake Russian collusion stuff, the, you know, the Ukrainian, the phone call with the Ukrainian president. Again, the same thing. They're going after this man constantly. And again, we have, we have got to understand one thing, like with the Ukrainian thing, the phone call with the president and all this stuff. We have got to understand that he was getting close to the... um. He knows, he knew what was going on with Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. And he was getting close to that. And, you know, again, I truly believe that he is a big threat to them. And again, people feel that way. They do. And again, that's why he's gaining support right now. He's gaining in the polls. Why? 
Because again, man, people understand what they're doing to him. They understand what they're doing to him. They do. And uh, again, I don't think we're going to see an end to this. I really, truly don't. They're going to keep going after this man. Again, they don't have anything on him. I don't believe they have anything at all on him. But they're going to keep going after him. And again, what they're doing is they're actually building up support for him. And they're causing more of a division in this country. This country. So this indictment will further the divisions, and especially if it's ultimately reversed on appeal. Look, the indictment is brought in the District of Columbia. And District of Columbia jury will convict anybody named Trump for anything. Um, and that's why Correct. the case should be moved to uh, Virginia. It will be subject to a motion to change the venue to Virginia, where you have a level playing field. It's a purple state. This case should be tried in a purple state not in a bright, 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 bright um, um, a Democratic state. And that's where it's being tried, in the most Democratic district in the United States of America, the most anti-Trump district in the entire United States. That's where the trial is scheduled to be held by a uh, judge who has a very questionable background. Um, she worked for years for a firm that's highly questionable, the David Boys firm, um, very, very mm -hmm. Democratic oriented. They represented. Hunter she was Biden. working. Right. And Burisma. And she was working there at the time of all of that stuff. Yeah. Not and, saying that know, she was David involved Boyce, in it, but. Right. David Boys and his firm have been charged with more uh, cases of uh, corruption and, and disbarable conduct than uh, any law firm in, in modern American history. And it's well known for its um, uh, being subject to, um, to so many charges. And she was part of that firm. And that's not something I would brag about. I got that firm disqualified in a case because of I a know. conflict of interest. And they've been charged over and over again with conflicts and other kinds of things. And she spent most of her career in that firm. So if I'm Donald Trump, I don't want to be tried in front of her. I want to be tried in front of a judge who uh, has a, a, a fair and better background. And I want to be tried in front of a jury that isn't 90 something percent uh, anti-Trump voters. Yeah. You know, work for a law firm. They represent Burisma. I mean, again, during the time that Hunter Biden was there, you know, again, we, we have truly got to understand this is a very left leading judge. A very left leaning judge and very left leaning area of the country. And again, there's no way that Donald Trump is going to get a fair trial. No way. And again, people, they truly, they, they're starting to wake up. They're understanding, hey, look, man, again, this is not right. We have to look at this a little bit. We have to understand <laughs> the connections here. We do. And we have to understand there's no way that, that Donald Trump is going to get a fair trial. Again, they've, they've been going after him for years. Since before he was president, they've been going after him. So again, we have to understand he's not going to get a fair trial. He's not. This, this judge also is the January 6th hanging judge. There hasn't been a single case that has come before her that she hasn't given tougher sentences than even the government was asking for. Well, I mean, you need to have, in this case, when you're trying the man who's running against the incumbent president, there has to be, it has to be Caesar's wife. It has to be clearer and cleaner than anything. And having the trial in the District of Columbia in front of this judge on the basis of an indictment of this kind is going to just sow greater divisions in this country. People are not going to be satisfied that this is a fair, objective justice. You know, the Bible, the Torah says, lo takir ponim to judges. Don't recognize faces. Don't do justice based on who the person is. Do justice based on the law and the facts. And the law and the facts don't support this indictment. Again, guys, when you have the ex-president of the United States on trial, again, you want everything to be clean and fair. And again, there's no way in hell this is. And again, I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. You know, if you truly looked into this, you know this isn't fair. 
Not one bit. And man, I think people, even on the left, are starting to understand, who are truly questioning things, they are starting to understand what is happening. And again, man, this guy is, I mean, every other week, man, they're trying to get him on something. They're trying to get him on something. And again, they've been trying to get him on stuff before he was present and during the time and after. So again, it's, it's only around the time that he's running. You know, again, it's not the time there, the couple of years in between. No. It's not the time before he started to run again. No, it's after he began to run, after he announced. And again, what they do is they go after people that pose a threat to them. And again, he does, and so does people like Kennedy. And again, as Kennedy becomes more and more of a threat to the establishment, again, they're going to go after him more and more as well. Um, I don't know how you feel about Jonathan Turley. Um, I I generally like him I, because he's kind of like yeah. the Constitution. He does he he doesn't always fall my way, um, uh, and so he said yesterday that this is the first criminal indictment of alleged disinformation. If you take a red pin to all the material presumptively pr protected by the First Amendment, you can reduce much of the indictment to haiku. I felt the Mar-a-Lago indictment was strong. This is the inverse. In fact, it's unfair at points. Uh, it quotes Trump in his speech about encouraging people to go to Capitol, to the Capitol, but like the January 6th committee, it omits where he says you should go peacefully. I'd like to get your comments on that in 60 seconds with Alan Dershowitz, the author of Get Trump. Uh, so what do you think about the first case, as Jonathan Turley says, uh, making disinformation a crime? No, I think he's right. Uh, I think this uh, really changes the nature of American politics. And if it were taken to its logical conclusion, half of Congress would be in prison. Um, you can't make it a crime to lie to the American public. Um, you know, lying has been part of American politics uh, since, uh, you know, Thomas Jefferson ran against uh, John right. Adams. Uh, and uh, the cure for lying is the other side tell the truth and you truth. win the election. They've gone after him every way they can. They really have. And again, they omit things he says on purpose. You know, again, like the January 6th stuff. Again, he told them to go peacefully, go peacefully to the Capitol to make yourself heard. Again, they omit that. Again, they don't want to make him look good at all, so they omit things that he says. Um, and the thing is, you know, I mean, just like when he became president, you know, back in, what was it, 2017? You know, the whole very fine people on both sides Again, he was not talking about white supremacist. He was talking about very fine people on both sides of the debate of whether the statues ought to stay up. Again, he said there's very fine people on both sides of that debate. But again, they don't want you to know that. They don't want people to know that. So again, they don't air that on TV. And again, that is really sad. It really is, man. And it really tells you just how corrupt things are. It protects lies. The First Amendment uh, protects so much speech that we despise. Uh, look, I've defended communists, Nazis, pornographers, uh, not because I like any of them, uh, but because I like free speech and because the alternative is a system of censorship. And this indictment takes us down the road toward uh, – uh, criminalizing uh, free speech. Real. And, you yeah. know, what is true and what is not true is often in the eye of the beholder, particularly in the political context. Remember, Chief Justice Rehnquist, a conservative chief justice, said the First Amendment doesn't recognize a false opinion. False opinions and true opinions have the same status under the First Amendment. And 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 this is a case criminalizing uh, a, a, a false false opinions, what people believe are false opinions, what I believe is a false opinion. I think that uh, President Biden won the election fair and square. I wish there hadn't been 
some of the Russia dossier stuff and some of the stuff involving uh, uh, social media. But the election count right. itself was, I think, fair. Was there some fraud? Yeah. Were there some constitutional problems? Yeah, Pennsylvania violated Article 2 of the Constitution, in my opinion. But it wouldn't have changed the outcome of the election. But Donald Trump has the right to protest and to be wrong. Uh, in- he has their right to say, you know, I believe the election was stolen. He has their right. And again, that's his opinion. And that opinion may be wrong. I don't know. But again, that is his opinion. Um, and we can't, we can't sanction people. We can't take people to court because they have an opinion that we don't like. And they use words that we don't like. And again, man, in this country, we are going in the wrong direction we are. You know, we're going in a direction where if you say the wrong pronouns, I, again, I forgot, I forgot the poll, but I think the majority of people under the age of like 30 agree that it should be criminal to call somebody, to misgender somebody, to call them by the wrong pronouns. And again, we have got to understand that we we have got to be able to have freedom of speech. Again, that's what made this country great. And if it hurts your feelings, oh, damn well. Again, we need to have freedom of speech. And, and Donald Trump, he can say whatever he wants to say. And again, man, they're omitting that he said go to the Capitol peacefully. They omit that. And again, that happens all the damn time to him. And we truly have got to understand what is going on. We are being pushed. We are being funneled in a certain direction we are. And again, man, people know. They know. The powers that be, they know what they're doing. But hey, guys, if you would, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks. You son of a... You son of a... You son of a...